The development of uncrewed or unmanned or remotely piloted vehicles has been one of the most fascinating aspects of modern warfare. Now, what's interesting is that some of these concepts were explored in the 1950s and 1960s um, by the QH-50C drone or the Dash-50 drone. I'll put a link to it. But um, effectively, the US Navy came up with some of these ideas even in the 1950s and 60s. However, due to the digitalization of systems, um, Wi-Fi networks, um, advances in computer technology, advances in cameras, advances in consumer electronics, we're now at the stage where the remotely piloted vehicle or the UAV or the UCAV, however you want to say it, is now at a, a level of maturity where it is really effective in combat. And I am absolutely fascinated by this subject area because after all, um, it's a lot easier and a lot better to conduct a war in a way that's less expensive um, for yourself in terms of losses and less expenses for um, yourself in terms of machinery and putting your own pilots and your own troops lives on the line. Um, as General Patton famously said, and I'll paraphrase because it's a family show, the purpose of war is to make the enemy die for their country and not to die for your country. OK, uh, very blunt. Uh, that was Patton's style. So these are some remotely piloted or um, uncrewed aerial vehicles that I've purchased from AliExpress. Now, I've got a lot of uh, kind of drone vehicles. I've got some around, some that I've made, some that um, uh, uh, um, real, uh, you know, models, one in 70 second scale models. And these are from AliExpress. These are one in 70 second um, resin cast uh, models or 3D printed resin models. I'm not sure which, but they are absolutely lovely. They are around £10 per version and I have got four of them. The way I'll be using these is I'll be using these um, to go ahead of attack helicopters, to scout, to protect the flank and to, to basically um, in areas where there are uh, lots of enemy air defences to um, operate without putting the lives of the Malagasy uh, Air Force crews and Army crews and Navy crews on the line. Now, um, I've got um, these little helicopters here, which are coaxial um rotated uh, helicopters for want of a better word um, and I've got some battle bots which have come from uh, uh, Zach in Australia printed um, Oz they're called there on Etsy absolutely lovely I've got some unmanned, unmanned um, ground vehicles UG uh, V's these are from uh, Zach printed Oz um, again uh, in Australia and these um, subjects of today's video, these um, drone um, coaxial um, helicoptered uh, weapon systems from AliExpress. So they come with a control station, which I painted here, which is rather nice. So I've got a few more um, control stations to do just there. Um, and uh, this is the one I already made as a prototype. I didn't get it quite uh accurate um, I had to extend the coaxial blade system um, and it has a little infrared um, night vision slash um, uh, camera system underneath and I've given it some rocket pods so this is like an attack um, drone version so the idea is that this scoots along the ground finds the target pops down scoots along the ground goes up lofts the rockets turns back and comes back um, using uh, the uh, camera system as well to call in artillery and to find the enemy positions. Um, the next one, the second one I've got, and I've got four in total, this is a surveillance um, drone. So I've got, then uh, it comes with this li little radar um, or the infrared sensor, which is really quite cool. So this one has a radar. So this is flying around and it's battlefield scanning the battlefield with its radar to pick up um, 
enemy vehicles which are moving to find enemy troop concentrations to pinpoint their positions. So that is a reconnaissance version. Uh, the next one here, and this is partially built, this um, has that turret and you can see that forward looking infrared turret. And again, this will probably be a reconnaissance version. So I'll have my radar reconnaissance version and I have um, an infrared forward looking um, infrared system um, reconnaissance system. So the idea is this can pick up troop movements and call in artillery fire and stuff like that. Or in um, areas which are very dangerous for attack helicopters, you can use the attack drone. And last but not least, and this is how they come packaged from China, from AliExpress. And these are all the parts that you get for it. So you get the um, blades, you get the radar, you get the forward looking infrared. You get a couple of crew figures and I can't decide whether they are Russian or um, NATO crew figures. Um, I don't really like them that much. So I'll put them to one side and then you get the body of the beast. Um, and then the um, landing uh, legs just attach onto it and the rotor system on the top. They are very easy to construct, very nice to build. Um, the blades do sag a bit, but the, I bend them back into shape and it works quite well. Um, and here are some of the component parts. So what you actually get with this is you get these um, missile tubes, which you can attach on to them. Um, now, the missile tubes to me look like um, Milan's um, or, or Russian style um, missiles, like a cornet or something like that. And they come on these little stub arms, which you can attach on the side. So I'll probably do this one as a reconnaissance drone. Now, the Malagasy uh, army that, that I build, the What If Army, doesn't have Milan um, helicopter launch tubes and doesn't have Russian um, helicopter launched weapons. So I'll probably stick a Hellfire on the side of this one. So I'll have the rockets, I'll have Hellfires, I've got the radar surveillance drone, and I'll probably do this last one as a, a weapons carrier. Um, so... I will add some stub wings on the side and here you go. You're running out of ammunition in the firefight. You need some ammunition. A helicopter can't get to you. It's far too dangerous to send the crew in. In comes the drone, remotely piloted, drops off the ammunition or medical supplies that you need um, to continue the fight. So those are some more of the um, unmanned or uncrewed vehicles. Uh, this is uh, how they come and how they look when they're built. Various stages of building them up and making them look right. And then a finely finished version. And as you can see, you've got some robot tanks, mini battle tanks here. You've got these UGV vehicles. And the whole idea is that you can expose your combat troops. And there they are. You can expose them to less of the enemy's fire and still conduct the missions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know um, what you think and I will get these built.